February the 11th, 2021. Guys uh, and girls, you got a couple of days left to get your Valentine uh, situation under control, if you know what I mean. Anyway, you're, we've got some changes in the weather, and uh, it's going to be cold, and the ice map that you're looking at, which is good through Friday a.m., which is tomorrow morning, has uh, moved a little further south. Notice how far into Texas that it uh, dips and through northern Louisiana and through uh, northwestern Mississippi all the way up almost to the Tennessee line. This is not that far from uh, Vicksburg, guys, in that area up around Eagle Lake and north, Greenwood, Greenville, all the way, again, Memphis, West Memphis, Arkansas. But um, most of this area is about to experience some very cold winter weather, and it's going to stay with us for quite a bit of time. Now, the we also are having power outages. Two of the states on the northeastern section of this map are already at over 100,000 that are powerless, waking up this morning because of ice on limbs, etc. And we talked about that before. And this is an AccuWeather map. They're saying locations from northern Arkansas and southern Missouri to central and south and southern West Virginia have the potential to pick up between a quarter and a half an inch of ice that adheres to elevated surfaces. And guys, they're asking everyone to absolutely do not travel unless you have to. They pulled in in certain places over 2,000 uh, more employees and backup uh, contractors and they're being overwhelmed trying to keep the roads and ice and, and things like that clear. And so you're going to create a problem for yourself and uh, first responders. It's all it's just too dangerous to deal with that. What you better uh, deal with is staying at home, staying um, warm as you can, and be as prepared as you can for losing power, maybe for a few days. But they're saying that any time ice accrues to a thickness of a quarter of an inch or greater, the risk of downed power lines increase significantly. Even though the buildup of ice may be gradual, it can last for 24 hours or more and slowly add weight to trees and power lines. Some trees may bend without breaking in this situation, but they still cause outages where tree limbs sag over the top of the power lines. There is the potential for significant destruction in wooded or suburban locations with trees and power lines that may block streets and highways in some communities. And in some of the hardest hit areas, they could slow power line repair for days. Cities forecast to receive at least a few hours of ice buildup include Dallas, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Paducah, and Lexington, Kentucky, uh, Huntington and Charleston, West Virginia, and Staunton, Virginia. Some changes with temperature at different layers of the atmosphere may prevent a major and widespread ice storm in Virginia, but even a couple of rounds of ice can lead to dangerous travel. By tonight, that's Thursday night, the remains of the winter storm is forecast to consolidate over portions of the southern Appalachians and the lower part of the mid-Atlantic coast. Now, from Thursday night to the start of Friday, tomorrow, second center of the storm can enhance precipitation enough to bring 6 to 12 inches of snow to parts of the West Virginia and Northwestern Virginia mountains and a dangerous layer of ice across southern and eastern Virginia. Even as the ice storm ends from west to east over Thursday and Friday, the ice buildup may be difficult to remove from the southern Appalachians to the southern plains. Now, like we said... It may not last long as far as the event, but the effects and the melting can take several days. And when you see these temperatures that I'm going to talk about, you'll understand why. They're saying many Americans will be at risk for going without heat for days amid frigid conditions that will continue to expand across the U.S. And guys, I know some cities don't allow um, fireplaces and wood-burning heaters, things like that, because of the smoke pollution. But if you're not in one of those areas and you don't have one, you need to really seriously consider that being part of your survival plan is wood-burning stoves and heaters. I've had one for years. Love it. Unlike some ice storms in parts of the southern plains in the middle Mississippi and Ohio valleys, temperatures will 
trend toward uh, downward rather than upward in the wake of the storm. The ice may strongly adhere to surfaces, especially where the warming rays of the sun do not reach in the shady areas behind buildings and trees. Guys, in the um, video I did a week ago, the coldest night and day was going to be tomorrow, Friday the 12th, remember? Then they moved it to Sunday uh, the 14th. Now that's going to dip Monday, but during this time, we're going to be experiencing several days uh, to where the nighttime temperatures are all below freezing, and the days are not going to be much better. But it says uh, temperatures are forecast to dip into the 20s, teens, and even the single digits uh, Fahrenheit late this week and this weekend in the ice storms aftermath from the southern plains to the Ohio Valley. In fact, temperatures are likely to be low enough to challenge records in many locations, especially Sunday night and Monday night. Not only while record, oh, will records be challenged, but in some cases they could be shattered. As we've talked about grand solar minimum for a long time, and we're starting to experience some of these effects. Now, of course, we're getting closer and closer to spring, but as these winters continue in this direction, we're going to have some problems and you need to prepare for it. This winter is still a long way from being over and you see what we're about to go through and it could be some of the coldest weather so far this year and uh, it could be the coldest for many years. Again, some cases the records will be shattered. For example, the record in Lubbock, Texas, Sunday night is 8 degrees Fahrenheit from 1951. The current forecast lowest 4 degrees below zero, which would break the record by 12 degrees. The following night, the record lowest 13 degrees set in 1979 with a current forecast of zero. So your 12 to 13 degree record-breaking cold nights. I've been up through Lubbock, Texas and had to dodge snow plows before coming back from Arizona. And uh, it, will, it will get rough in that area of windmills and cotton fields. Even in cities where records may not be broken by as much, records that have stood for more than 100 years will be in jeopardy. In Wichita, Kansas, Sunday night's record of five below was set in 1936 with a current forecast of seven below. However, Monday night, the record of six below zero was set back in 1903. The forecast of 11 degrees below zero would easily break that long-standing record. Guys, imagine that. 11 below zero in Kansas. And let me say this yesterday. I did two videos, and I would said when I did the first video that uh, I would get the other one up uh, possibly within an hour. It took longer than that because we realized the rain that we got last night was coming and it was going to be worse than we thought, so we had to stack up more firewood out of the pile and get it under um, out of the rain so that we would be... Um, close to a week's supply and that's going to be important um, again I cannot overemphasize with the way things are changing that uh, be prepared for alternative methods of heat and really the most secure is uh, wood burning and to re-emphasize this point uh, they're saying these record-breaking temperatures will mean that the ice and snow will remain on the ground for several days after the storm ends, although that may not be the end of this wintry precipitation. The overall weather pattern remains loaded with winter storms in the coming weeks. The uh, chief broadcast meteorologist, Bernie Reno of AccuWeather, said what we're seeing is an unbelievable pattern. He said the meteorologists are going to be have been busy and will continue to be busy forecasting and tracking this they're saying the, they're monitoring the potential for additional storms within the next 10 days that could bring more rain or rounds of ice and snow from the southern plains to the northeast as a winter storm train ramps up in the northwest so guys over on the west coast don't forget about this and just for an example, guys, here where I'm at in central Mississippi, uh, the thunder and lightning woke me up at about 3 o'clock this morning. And I got up. It was 60 degrees outside. Now we're dealing with 44 degrees, a real feel of 39. And let's look down the road at this. And uh, our real feel tonight will be 31, a 
be 37 degrees, but the real feel will be 31. So tonight starts this, this beginning of several days of below freezing nights. Tomorrow's high will only be 43 with a real feel of 39. The low tomorrow night, 38, with a real feel of 31 again. So that's what it's going to be like. You got, you know, it's not a hard freeze as far as some pipes, but if they're exposed, you could have some problems. But uh, think about your pets. Again, your extra heat source. You now, Saturday, the high is 46, the low is 30. That's the temperature, not the real feel. But the coldest night now has moved from Sunday, which is 26 degrees, to Monday. It would move. Over this week, from Friday to Saturday to Sunday, and now Monday night, 15 degrees. And that day, it's not going to get above freezing. It's saying 34, but the real feel, this is the high of the day, it will be 31. Now, we may have some rain and snow during that period of time because we're in the um, cloud, high cloud covers. A probability of precipitation is going from 50 to 35% during this time. But if you come down to Sunday night, 15 degree low, real feel, 10. Remember, it was going to be around 14 degrees. So, guys, it, it's not letting up yet. And if we go on, if you go to AccuWeather, type in your area. They, they have a good extended forecast. You can see what you're dealing with. So, if we're going to be 10 degrees Sunday night this far south, then you can kind of add up what's going to happen north of here. But all of my friends in the southeast, Go to AccuWeather, type in your location, look forward for the next week or 10 days or so, and make plans accordingly. We're watching this, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.